has suspicious grouped microcalcifications in the left breast. A stereotactic vacuum-assisted biopsy has been requested. The calcifications are located laterally on the CC view and superiorly on the MLO view. They are situated posteriorly. Posterior lesions can be difficult to target using a prone table. This patient is a great candidate for a stereotactic biopsy using the add-on stereotactic device and the decubitus breast biopsy table. We will place the patient in the lateral decubitus position with the left side up. With the medical positioning's DBI table, the patient is able to lay comfortably on her side. The table snugs up to the mammogram machine and we're able to offer the patient back support so that she's extremely comfortable. And this is compared to prone positioning on a dedicated table, which is not nearly as comfortable for the patient. So we've reviewed the pre-biopsy mammogram and have an idea of where in the breast the calcifications are located for our preliminary targeting pictures. Sometimes it's useful to do a pre-biopsy mammogram and to place a BB marker on the skin prior to bringing the patient into the stereotactic room. Sometimes that helps with localization. We're going to take our first scalp picture. Our initial scout demonstrated calcifications at the posterior aspect of the biopsy window. And so we reposition the patient to create a situation where the calcifications are more in the center of the biopsy window. We are now going to tee up the scout image. The calcifications are right in the center of the biopsy window. And in a moment, we'll prepare our stereotactic views. We have angled the gantry plus 15 degrees off the central axis for the first stereo image. As soon as this image comes up on the monitor and we like it, looks beautiful. We will angle the gantry minus 15 degrees for the second stereo image. We will fire outside of the breast on this case. Each needle manufacturer has a needle guide that comes with the kit. The needle guide is sterile and is placed on the machine at the time of the biopsy. I'm just going to move this down toward your skin. And uh, we have uh, zeroed our target, so um, the calcifications are right below the needle guide at this moment. And what I've done is I've confirmed the position here with the position of the calcifications actually on the image. It's very important to do that because every once in a while, um, in haste, someone will forget to zero uh, the target, and then you're on the last target. So a little stick coming right there. Good. A little burning and stinging is normal. And I bring up uh, a good skin wheel so that I have plenty of room to work here. I use 1% buffered lidocaine. I buffer it with sodium bicarbonate and about a 10 to 1 dilution. I find that that really does help take the sting out of the, the injection. Good, you did great. The next lidocaine that I use is 1% buffered lidocaine with epinephrine. So what you're going to feel, Karen, is just a little bit of pressure. Deep. I like to use the epinephrine um, because it does decrease the bleeding at the biopsy site for the patient. And I typically inject around 10 cc's or so, 10 to 12 cc's. I'll go ahead and okay. take the, the Cenerex needle. So I take the Cenerex and um, we take off the cover. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my needle guide up just a tad here from the skin. And then I'm going to guide this needle onto the holder. 
and through the guide. Now, Karen, you're going to feel me pushing on you here. So I have it lined up beautifully. I'm going to push, push, push really firmly. Excellent. Good. Needles in place. We're going to take a couple of stereo pictures. Next, I'm going to deliver some anesthetic through the needle that's already there. That's done easily with the Cinerex needle by marrying the, uh, the, the syringe with the introducer uh, into the biopsy device and you can go ahead and push it. So I'm delivering some local anesthetic. You may feel this a little bit, Karen. It's, it's going right to the area where we're going to take the biopsy samples so that you won't feel anything. You're not feeling it now? Fantastic. So the needle has turned around the clock as I've injected the additional local anesthetic. Okay. I'll close up our system so that we have a system that we can apply vacuum to. And we're ready to rock and roll. It's important when you start sampling to go ahead and look into your uh, chamber to make sure that you actually are getting samples that are shooting back into the chamber. And I can see some tissue samples coming in there now. Um, it's just a second check to make sure that all of your systems are on go and you have good vacuum. We're getting beautiful samples. We won't know um, if we have calcifications in any of the samples until we actually x-ray them. And we'll do that when we're finished with our sampling regimen. Initially, the needle goes around um, the even numbers. It starts at 12, goes 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then the second time it goes around, it goes at the odd numbers. You can go ahead and one more time. We'll go so we actually sample every clock position, um, taking 12 samples as a standard case. The samples are also washed as they're collected. And the effluent is then taken away by another vacuum. What we're doing now is we're actually uh, vacuuming the area where we've taken the samples. I always like to vacuum and make sure things are nice and clean. It gets rid of any tissue that may be in the chamber and also just takes care of any heme that may be at the site. This is the specimen radiograph. The radiograph is obtained while the patient is still on the table. It confirms the presence of targeted microcalcifications in multiple samples. The samples with microcalcifications are placed in a formalin jar that is separate from the samples without microcalcifications. All of the tissue is submitted to pathology. The specimen radiograph showed beautiful calcifications in the samples. It's quite simple to introduce the tissue marker into the breast. Um, it does require, however, a steady hand. And the important part of this section of the procedure is to make sure that the yellow arrow lines up with the red arrow on the device so that we have the tissue marker going out of the sample notch and not back into the needle. So I just plunge the tissue marker out. Olga's going to rotate the needle 180 degrees and I'm just going to cock it, cock the needle, and we're going to take a stereo picture to see if the tissue marker went out. Tissue marker is in the breast, which is where we want it. I'm just going to pull the needle out of your breast, Karen. You're going to feel a little thing drop on your skin. That's okay. Good. I just hand this off. And we are finished. We'll hold a little pressure here with you in this position. You did great. You didn't bleed at all. The post-biopsy mammogram of the left breast demonstrates the tissue marker in the upper outer quadrant at the biopsy site. A few residual microcalcifications are present in the area. No hematoma is present.